One, two, three, four. Welcome back to It's Not a Sport, Season 4, Episode 17, I believe. We've been going a little bit out of order with the last couple episodes because I had a really good talk that I wanted to get out and we came back from our break. But now, this should be back on schedule with Episode 17. With that out of the way, quick reminder, as always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. Leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this week's discussion, this week's talk. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media. All of our previous seasons are all archived on the YouTube channel, so if you want to check that out and all old talks, they're all up on there. With further ado, let's get into this week's main talk, which is really censorship or really controlling younger audience and i'm gonna start with kind of a story i think that is relatively new for uh, our generation moving forward back in the day when i was growing up um i was really i would say the first generation to be introduced to major technology like phones and uh computers and etc growing up using those devices nowadays raising kids especially here in america i see it with my cousins my cousins they come in and they're always on their tablets they're always on their switch they're always on you know their mom's phone you know if your kid's complaining what do you do just to entertain them on the flight uh to a different nation or you're in the car or whatever you give them their phone you give them a tablet they can watch whatever kids show on the go or learn or play whatever app nowadays nowadays kids younger growing up toddlers are very tech savvy than let's say my generation or generation before us moving on into what we're talking about now and our main topic being kind of china and south korea so recently at the time recording this this is the 31st i believe of august china just announced that they passed a law prohibiting minors anyone under 18 that they can only play three hours of video games a week now there is already a law in place like this i believe it was only eight hours a week that they could play but now they've shortened it to three hours a week. And I think it's only three hour, an hour on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is how is they can play video games. Those are the only times, three hours. Really short amount of time, especially with the variety of games and how much games compete for your time nowadays. That's yeah, very difficult. They are calling this the spiritual opium epidemic or spiritual opium. And if you don't know what that means, through Chinese history uh, and the Europe, Europeans got them addicted to opiums and they really cracked down on opiums. They called the Opium Wars. There's a book about it, et cetera. But this happened like twice throughout Chinese history and they really got addicted to that drug. And Europeans were selling them that drug to get addicted to them so they can get in. So they have a really bad history with opium. And now they are calling video games the second, you know, the new spiritual opium, which is really interesting. So how does this work? And we're going to talk about China first, and then I'm going to talk about Korea. So in China and in Korea, in order to play video games, in order to make an account, you have to sign in and make an account with your ID. I think in Korea, it's actually your social security number too. Um, But don't quote me on that. So you have to be a citizen to be registered to play video games. And in these type of cultures, PC banks, which if you don't know, are basically businesses. They're like bars, but they're just lined up with tons of PCs. And you come in and you pay for game time and you just play as as long as you want for as long as time you paid for so you pay for game time and they're just like pc bars where they just have pc 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 it's basically a giant computer lab for playing video games and these are huge in korea and they're really huge in china because korea and china are not big on consoles like we are here in the u.s 
So they come in to the PC bangs and they make an account with their ID and they play video games. And that's how it works. And they're really, really, really big on computer games and infrastructure. I think the generally East and Asian countries are more tech savvy than we are in the West. If we look at infrastructure, just go out in America, look at how bad our bridges are, how we still get like 30, 40 ping if you're using your internet, how slow your internet is. Our infrastructure here is actually relatively bad compared to Korea, which again, they're smaller, but like China, China's bigger and they have better infrastructure than we do. Now, kids are playing video games all, all the time there because they're so tech savvy. Streams are really huge there. Social media, there's they have like 50 different Twitters over in China that we can't even access. And all of that combined and how much they play video games over there is concerning. Now, of course, the answer to this would be parenting. When I was growing up, I played a lot of video games too and how, you know, how they stopped me as I was parent it to do. My dad would say, okay, you could only play for X amount of hours. Or your mom or my mom would say, oh, you could play for X amount of hours. But this is very interesting over there because now the government is stepping in. In the long run, I don't think this really means anything for China. It may mean things for certain kids, but I think a lot of people will either, you know, find backhand ways of doing it. You can, you know, use your parents' ID. You can pay some dude to let him use your ID to make an account. There's tons of ways around this. It's not hard, but it's a very interesting crackdown on video games that China does because they are so big on censorship and they're such a big part of the video game community now, not even just the video game community, but movies, television, everything has to do with China just because there's so much money to be made there that it's an interesting conversation to have and it's a very interesting move by their government to prohibit the uh, gaming of children. Now, will this have negative effects? Yes. I think China is a very different government from us. You know, they they have the power to enforce certain things in their economy to that would just never happen here. So, for example, like, let's say um, over COVID, we had lockdown and Chinese New Year came around and they said, OK, everyone go out and spend money. The Chinese government could do that and force kind of people to do that and make that suggestion to their citizens to do that to jumpstart the economy. But here in the US, we are very anti-government, I would say. Not really anti-government, but more like we wouldn't do that. If our government suggested that to go out and start spending money during a quarantine, we wouldn't, I don't think in the city, it depends on where you are in the U.S., obviously, but we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't take that recommendation as much as China is. Like, if they enforced strict game laws on uh, on children, right, a lot of that wouldn't happen. The U.S. government would never do that. They don't have, I don't think, the power or to really do that, the rights to do that. They have the power, but overall, because we are such a democracy built on like the values of freedom and stuff like that, I don't think it would work in the long run. But China does have the ability to pass those laws and do that and regulate gaming and things harder than the US government does. Moving on to South Korea, South Korea has somewhat of a similar situation where you do have to log in with your ID to play games. And if you know, again, South Korea has another huge gaming market. Just look at how big League and are both are bit how big league is in both of those countries but south korea this is a little a bit older of an article but it happens at the same time in this month of august they have a curfew uh it's under the law of developers who afford game services to play to players under the age of 16 between the hours of midnight to 6 a.m could be fined up to 10 million won about 800 or 8,560 dollars or be sentenced to prison time so they actually have a gaming curfew which for younger for people under 16 and this is again to prevent gamers young gamers 16 year olds to just stay in pc bangs all night to go into their pc bang pay the hours stay there all night go to school continue that they have to go home they have to stop their youth and their generation and their community is so more entwined with technology over there 
that it's very different for us to comprehend their situation i think i would actually love to go and visit these countries just to really see how influenced they are under gaming and social media and entertainment and web comics and mangas just all that personality how much it influences them because over here i would say gaming is a very small part of united states culture it really just kind of blew up with quarantine a lot of things blew up with quarantine that i think were already very prevalent in those countries like china and korea with further ado i think that's going to be this week's talk i just wanted to talk about this because i think it's a very interesting development on how they their laws are passed over there and how they're regulated over there and how they try to control their youth because their youth is so into video games and into uh things like twitch things like south korea or things like web comics and things like that now was they're so such a heavy part of their culture and over here i think with the next generation growing up with COVID and what it did for people it's only a part of being our part of our culture so to speak Gaming isn't as big here in America as it is in those in China and Korea, especially mobile gaming. It's one of the reasons why a lot of companies cater towards the Chinese market and the Korean market. Korea is not as big as China, so that's why they don't get uh, as catered towards overall. But like just to get an idea of just how big and I've, I can't stress this enough just because of the laws, how big it is over there. Korea, again, later on, I believe it was this year, passed a law commending certain people, popular people, from going into military service. So in Korea, you have to serve military service if you're a male, I believe. And once you turn 18, you have to serve like two years of in the military. However, they passed a law that exempts people from this or delays people from this if you are very popular basically to protect their two biggest assets which is faker the league of legends pro he's very very big over there in korea he's huge there in korea he's like the beyonce of video games or something like that that's how big he is he's huge and BTS, which BTS are more famous over here in the West than let's say Faker, but they are huge. And those two people probably earn Korea so much money overall that they have to exempt them from military service until they retire. And then once they retire, they'll probably go to military service and then do whatever they do. But that's how big they are in Korea. That's how big gaming and just technology is over there. So. With that out of the way, now that's going to be our final talk. Let's get into the news. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Really like to hear what you think about it. Let's go on now. All right, and welcome back. Let's not support. Hope you enjoyed this week's talk. I quick disclaimer, um, I had some audio issues since the time of recording that talk and now, so the audio may sound somewhat different. Hopefully it sounds better and decent and smooth for your ears as well, etc. So that's a quick disclaimer. Talking about the China and Korean talk, since I recorded that show, also with the previous episodes, there has been a lot of updates when it comes to China's crackdown on them, really their tech industry. A lot of their companies have complied, saying they are going to fight Western uh, platforms for video games and also add anti-addiction features to their video games. China's also cracked down kind of on the f their fandoms, how fandoms can be very popular in different uh, Chinese superstars or and stuff like that. They cracked down a lot of gay stuff, mostly to or homosexual laws were put into place mostly to stop i believe fans being crazy over korean and japanese boy bands and stuff like that so for example things like two men in a bed sleeping together or two men like a man restraining another man are illegal to show in china now so i i believe that's to kind of crack down on the, the really hot 
Chinese and Korean superstars over there, stuff like that, and more boys love stuff and all that they're trying to crack down. And really, I guess they're trying to get their youth to go outside and do something, but it's been a very interesting journey that has yet to finish. And we will keep you posted uh, throughout this journey, but China has really cracked down recently month on their tech industry and the video game industry in general and basically a, a lot of hobbies that their youth is and do they ban crypto as well so they've been doing a lot of law of past with that out of the way let's get into i really hope the audio sounds somewhat decent starting with sony is adding game trials feature feature to ps5s but there's a catch it only is available in the united kingdom currently i think it's only for two games death stranding and in director the death stranding director's cut and Sackboy: a big adventure so this is interesting that they're adding free trials we used to have a lot of demos and free trials and that was kind of the thing back in the early 2000s it was before you bought a game you could Test it out with a demo and kind of back rolled that and took that out of most games where they don't really release a whole lot of demos that you can play and check out before you spend your money. You just spend your money and you get what you get. So it's very interesting that Sony's testing this and only in the UK and not in the United States or anything. The Internationals uh, 2021 ticket sales have been canceled due to COVID rates in Romania. So if you don't know what this is, Dota 2 International is basically Dota 2's equivalent of Worlds. It's their super big, big tournament, even bigger than League, I think, arguably. It's the big thing for Dota, and they canceled ticket sales because of COVID costs in um, Romania. It's the only, like, real tournament, I think, in Dota 2 that Valve is actually officially, like, a part of running. So this is really sad to see as much as I haven't I've watched some of these tournaments and they are super fun and super hyped keep on moving a lot of news for this week comes from the Tokyo game show which just passed and we just had a, a lot of crazy news from Tokyo game show but from the Tokyo game show which is basically a, the Japanese e3 they announced that ghost of Shoshima and monster hunter rise are the two game of the years for uh, 2020. So that's pretty big. Ghost of Tsushima was my game of the year. It was absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning, and I think really overall some really good game design came out of that. So if you haven't picked up or tried Ghost of Tsushima yet, I highly recommend you give it a go. Genshin Impact has generated $2 billion on mobile. Let's just say that's just mobile in its first year. So we already knew this game was huge. It made back probably a shit ton of its development cost, which is the goal. It made um, probably a lot more of its development cost within the first month, where we're saying like a million dollars. However, I think that now that this game is out for a year and people have given it a chance for a year, it's it's starting to die down. Um, I quit this game recently earlier this uh, season. I discussed uh, my problems with the game overall and yes it makes money but a lot of that money goes to advertisement instead of making the game overall better and a better experience for the player base overall so if and it is a gotcha game like you have to understand that it is a gotcha game and mihoi we knew this going in that they were not known for being generous and a good company with their other game uh going or whatever impact is their other game that they're getting Final Fantasy 16 producer Yoshi P. Uh, he talked about some of the development for Final Fantasy 16. We haven't really seen anything about this game at all since the PlayStation State of Play, uh, I think earlier this year or maybe towards the end of last year. So how is this game's state currently? Well, he says that the main scenario, which is what they call the main story, is complete. So the main financial story of a Final, Fan of Final Fantasy 16 is currently complete. Uh, and they are currently working on side quests and just polling up some character models and stuff like that. So it seems to be going on schedule. It seems to be going well. 
especially with COVID delays. We saw a lot of things with COVID delays. I wouldn't be surprised if this game also got hit with COVID delays, delays excuse me, but it seems to be on track, which is good. Konami is set to revive Metal Gear Castlevania and Silent Hill. So this is very interesting. Konami has, I think, really been out of the game for a while. I, I, I'm I, not too sure how they make their money. I, I would bet it would be mobile games and uh, Koshinko machines over in Japan is how they make their main uh, source of income. Because the last Metal Gear Solid was Me uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, the last game that Kojima worked on before Death Stranding. That was released, I believe, in like 2016. Um, It had to be, or, or around there. So, and then uh, I don't really know when the last Castlevania or Silent Hill games came out, uh, especially where the Castlevania anime has done really well. And it's going to be interesting to see them try and bring back these series, especially for Metal Gear, because what is Metal Gear without Kojima is going to be a very interesting thing to see. PlayStation has acquired Bluepoint Games. So they have joined the PlayStation Studios. If you don't know what Blue, Co Blue Point Games, who they are, like me, they do a lot of remakes and remasters. So they reworked a lot of like the Metal Gear Solid series for PS3 and the Uncharted Drake Collection. Uh, most recently, the reworked game that you'll probably be more known for is uh, Demon Souls. They made the Demon Souls remake. They also made the Shadow Colossus remake. So they've kind of been a studio that's been around for a, a bit working with PlayStation, just remaking classic PlayStation games. And now they're officially part of the family. Maybe now that they, they're officially part of the family, they can uh, stop remastering games and maybe actually make a game of their own. Get a huge chance that PlayStation likes to give out. So that would be wonderful because I would love to see what you guys have to make. The reason why God of War was delayed was uh, Kristen Judge, who is a producer, writer in, uh, for God of War. He had some health issues, and the entire team decided to delay the game because of that. Also, I think probably COVID came in too. COVID, they have to adapt to COVID delays, which is good. I think they handled it very well. They've just only recently talked or shown us things about God of War uh, Ragnarok and I think if you're not ready to talk about the game you take the Nintendo approach and you don't talk about the game until you're ready to talk about it so yeah it's 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 actually kind of cool to just see like the, the entire team just kind of waited for him to uh, get back in the health but I guess that also just shows how important he is to the company Tokyo Game Show 2021, here we go. So this is overall all the Tokyo Game Show news that we came out. So first off, they showed uh, Square Enix showed off some stuff with Stranger, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origins gets a March release date for next year. That's March 18th, 2022. There's a trailer out for that. Some real cool stuff, some really interesting things, to be honest. Uh, We'll wait. We'll have to wait and see. They also showed us some gameplay of that, and then we have Forspoken developers discuss a magic uh, parkour system and more. So they talked about their game. We also have some new Shin Megumi Tensei Five gameplay featuring an angry ogre boss that came out as well. That game is set to be released, I believe, relatively soon. Final Fantasy VII: The First Soldier gets a release date for Windows and. Uh, it's a, it seems to be a mobile game. It uh, will be released on iOS and Android devices on November 20, uh, 2021, so relatively soon. Square Enix Showcase featured trailers for Final Fantasy. Um, so for that game, for Final Fantasy VII, The First Soldier, they showed off some gameplay trailer for that. That was really cool. Estelle Sophie sequel announced for 2022. I have no clue what that means, but hey, sequel to a new game. Let's go. Uh, Edune Chronicles Rising Gate at the first game, uh, it's a first gameplay reveal, so this game, uh, seems to be like a cool kind of JRPG, it got some gameplay, so that's really cool to see, and it'll be released in spring 2022 for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, S, and Steam, and Nintendo Switch, we got some Monster Hunter Rise news as well, um, the Sunbreaker expansion will include a new, uh, hub, monsters, and location, 
Sega Mysterious RPG is Sin Chronicles. So Sega coming out with some new stuff. This new game heads to the iOS and Android devices on December 15th in Japan. It is a successor, not a sequel to the Chain Chronicles series, uh, which was released back in 2013 on the PS Vita. It says here, a uh, new Square Enix uh, RPG dungeon encounter revealed coming in two weeks. So they revealed some more stuff that they have in store for us. Monster Hunter Rise comes to Steam in, in January 2022. That's some cool stuff for Monster Hunter, which ironically has been on the rise since the last couple games that they've released. We also have a uh, Monster Hunter Showcase reveal of Sonic and the Ghost and Goblins collaboration. Interesting. Phil Spencer wants more Xbox to uh, wants Xbox to increase its Japanese game lineup. I think we've seen this with Game Pass a couple times. They've really tried to get all the Yakuza games on there as well. So it's no surprise because I think the Japanese make probably the best video games out there currently. X Tango GameWorks developer uh, Ikumi Nakamura is working on an on a gun gravel sequel. So there's that. Uh, Tango GameWorks is in developing a new game, Evil Within 2, director leading. So that's a new game. Well, Scarlet Nexus and more headed to Xbox Game Pass. Redfall, Starfield, and more will be localized for Japan. Guilty Gear Strive comes for next. Uh, is coming out with the next tournament along with its soundtrack which i believe just released on spotify so go check that one out if you haven't listened to that already i'm kind of waiting to see what the top songs are before i give it a full listen uh king of fight 15 snk reveal its first all new character so king of fight gets a new uh character I don't know, I blinked there for a second, my bad. Swirly, The Good Life gets an Xbox exclusive demo. Eternal Returns gets a release date and trailer. And that's about it for the Tokyo Game Show. A lot of JRPG stuff. A lot of mobile games. They're really big on mobile games in the East in general. So that's some cool news that came out of the Tokyo Game Show. Let's get into esports now. And we're going to start with Valorant because... World starts actually tomorrow on Tuesday, the 5th. Uh, that's where League of Legends, the World 2021 Championship starts with plans. Um, I believe, actually, I, sh I should just pull that up to be completely. Give me a second. don't know why I didn't. Oh, it was just brain farting. Uh, but the first game for Worlds will be Hanwan, uh, Hanwan Life Esports versus LNG Esports. It's the best of one. Starts at 6 a.m. Central Time. That's here. So it's in the morning because that's in the Netherlands. And you get to see Chovy and a Chinese team start off. So probably a good match to start the game off of. But quickly, let's jump back into Valorant. Also, Overwatch League is currently over. They're done for the year, I believe, as well. So, with Valorant, they just finished up their Champion Tour Game Changers Series 3 in North America. We're going to start on the upper qualifiers. We had Cloud9 White win 2-0 against Xset Female. TSM Female lost to Dignitas. Then we had Gen G Black win against Polaris. And then Shopify Rebellions win against CLG Red. In the lower bracket, Xset Female won and beat TSM female. Uh, Polaris lost to CLG Red. In the upper bracket semifinals, Cloud9 White beat Dignitas to move forward to the upper bracket finals. And Gen.G Black lost to Shopify Rebellions and they moved forward to the upper bracket finals. In the lower bracket round two, Gen.G Black lost to Xset Females. Dignitas won against CLG Red. In the lower bracket round three, uh, they had Xset Females lost to Dignitas, and in the lower bracket finals, Shopify Rebellion went uh, won against Dignitas because they lost in the upper bracket finals to C9, where again they were able to challenge C9 in the grand finals, where C9 White beat Shopify Rebellions and winning the draw. So congratulations to C9 White for that. Low Esports, again, real quick, this week alone, the games that you have to look forward to is Hanwan Life Esports versus LNG Esports, Infinity versus Red uh, Kalug, LNG versus Peace, Hanwan Life versus Infinity, Unicorns of Love versus Detonation Focus Me, 
uh, Dallas Drury Espor uh, versus Beyond Gaming, Detonation Focus Me versus C9, and Cloud and Unicorns of Love versus Dallas Drury Espor. Um, and that's for tomorrow. And then they have more games on Wednesday. That will be uh, Hanwan versus Peace, uh, Red Kling versus LNG, Infinity versus Peace, Red Kling versus Hanwan, Beyond Gaming versus C9, Galaxy is Spore versus Detonation Focus Me, Beyond Gaming versus Unicorns of Love, and C9 versus Galaxy is Spore. And then on Thursday, we will have LNG e uh, Esports versus Infinity, Peace versus Red Clang, Detonation Focus Me versus Beyond Gaming, and Cloud9 versus Unicorns of Love. And then Friday, we have to be decided to be decided. Saturday, we have to be decided to be decided. And then we will get to group stages starting on Monday which also starts with a really banger of a game being Damwon versus OnePlus Phoenix. So, looking forward to Worlds. Uh, there should be some stale metas, but really interesting games because it's always fun to see the pros play against the best of the best. With that out of the way, we're finally in the month of October, and that means we can talk about what games are coming out for October. So, first off, we have FIFA 2022 was just released, followed by Alan Wake Remastered. We also have Lego Marvel Super Heroes, which was released for the Switch. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania was released for pretty much all the platforms. I don't feel like naming them. Far Cry 6 is coming out on October 7th, so that's very soon. Metroid Dread is coming out for the Switch on October 8th. That's a big one. Tetris Effect Connect comes out on the Switch on October 8th as well. And October 12th, we will have Black Back for Blood, the upcoming sequel to the Left 4 Dead franchise. Then we will have uh, Disco Elysium, the final cut that comes out for Xboxes and Switch on October 12th. We have Monster Hunter Crown, Ori, the Ori, uh, the collection. We will have the new Jackbox Party games come out, Crisis Be Remastered, a Demon Slayer game, the Hockey 2022 game coming out. Looking forward to Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy also comes out this month. Age of Empires 4 comes out this month. Uh, and Mario Party uh, Superstars also comes out at the end of this month as well. So we got some really good game releases coming out in October as we move into the holiday and start to pick up more. Anyway, that's going to conclude this week's show. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the audio for this segment sounds somewhat decent and good. Uh, I really am probably going to bring up production value a lot because it keeps breaking on me. And with game development too... My machine is kind of dying on a little bit so with that out of the way quick reminder as always make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe it really helps me out if you want to leave a topic that you want me to talk about or something to look forward to i will be more than happy to inspect it and do some research and talk about it in a future show if you want to listen to all of our past shows they are up on all, all archived on our youtube channel uh, that's season one, two, and three. Or if you want to listen to this in podcast form, you can find us on Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, and iTunes. We're all up on there. Make sure to check out our website as well for some articles that I've written and our development blog for the current game I'm working on for my senior capstone as well. That gets updated each Monday. So definitely check that one out if you're interested in seeing how this game and the game that I'm doing is being developed. Anyway. This is your host, Salty Waffles, signing off, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful climb.